Hey, I hope you're doing great. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the thing that I asked you to do last week, and then um, just we're just going to expand it a little bit with negative numbers for this week. So this problem that's over here, this x squared plus 6x plus 8, this could have been a problem from last week. So I, I've got 1x squared. I've got 6x's. So 6 of these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I've got 8 ones. Uh, here are ones. Six, seven, eight. Now, oh, um, most people did a really good job arranging these. Um, I want to show you some things that some people did that actually don't work. And they're things like this. So notice if I try and line up uh, my x's like this, this here is good, but this isn't. That line, whatever this line is, needs to go all the way through the rectangle. So if I if I do this, I'm actually not lining it up not lining up right you know if i try and put my ones like in here like this it this doesn't work this part's okay this these lines match up like the sides have to match up exactly so if i wanted to put x's along this side the long side of the x is going to have to match up the long side of the of the x squared i can't go this this side shorter than that side short uh, sides have to match so let me just mess around with this one and see what I can see what I can do. Uh, that'll give me nine, I think. What if I did this? Four and two. Yeah, I think that'll work because four times two is eight. So uh, this would be a good alignment right here for this problem. And I want to point out again. Notice like any line that's here goes all the way through the rectangle like that or like this. So these these sides have to match up so that the lines go all the way through the rectangle. Again, don't match up anything like this. So this is how we are going to match these up. Now, hmm, let's uh, let's talk about the idea between a positive and a negative x. So notice if I double click, it turns it. But if I just click it once, it turns it negative. And I can have a negative 1, too. So now what we're going to do is we're going to deal with positive and negatives. So let's look at that problem that looks like this. x minus 2 times x plus 3. So one side is, if we're going to say it's x minus 2 long. So here's an x. But what I'm going to put on its sides are not negative 1s, but negative 2s. So notice that's how long one of my sides would be. My other side would be a positive x and a positive 3. Now what I'm doing is I'm not making the rectangle now, I'm just lining up the sides so we can see how big the sides are, right? This is x plus 3, this is x minus 2. And now if I multiply this one out, I get an x squared in here. And now let's think about this. One, a positive 1 times a positive x, that's a positive x. So there'd be a positive x here, positive x here, positive x here. And then if we look at these ones, a positive x times a negative 1. Positive times a negative is negative. So if I have a positive crossed with a negative, I know that it's going to be negative. So there'd be a negative here. Uh, there would also be a negative here. And now if I look down here in this corner, these are positive ones. These are negative ones. Positive times negative is negative. So what would go in here would be all negatives. So that's what that would become. And I want you to notice then, since I have this x squared, th this has one x squared. But notice it also has three positive x's and two negative x's. So like these two positive x's and these two negative x's really cancel each other out. So that's a zero. So I, or what I really have here is an x squared, a positive x, and six negative ones. So this actually multiplies out to that, x squared plus x minus 6. All right, so that in mind, positive times a negative is negative. Let's do another problem. So I'm going to look at this problem right here, this x squared uh, plus x minus 12. 
So let me gather up my pieces. I have an x squared. I have a 1x. And I have 12 negative ones. We already have 6 here. So 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. All right, so now I have this. So when I line it up, I know that I'm going to have x squareds up here. I know my ones are going to end up kind of kitty corner from it, you know, diagonal from it. So I could just start to throw them in here like this. And I don't know how these are going to be. I'm just I'm just putting them in here somehow. I also know I have one x. Now, how am I going to make a rectangle out of this? Well, what I need to do is I start to need to add in x, positive x's and negative x's in such a way that I have an equal number of them. So notice here, if I, I'm going to, and I'm going to make, like, if it's negative here, they're all the negatives are going to go here, all the positives are going to go here. So if I start to do that, a positive x and a negative x. Notice how that's a zero. So this is still x squared plus one minus 12, and that's just a zero. So I could do another pair, another x, and another negative x. So again, these two positive x's, two negative x's make a zero. So if I keep adding, if I keep adding positive x's here, it's not going to work. So how about I maybe steal one of these rows? Maybe go like that. Oh, that's going to work out because then that'll give me a positive x and a negative x like that. And so notice then now what I have is this side is x plus four. So x plus 4. And this side that's here is x, but it's minus 3 because these are negatives times x minus 3. And notice that I only have one x in here because these three x's with those three negative x's make a 0. All right, let's try, let's try another one. How about an x squared minus a 4x? And get these out of here. And then again, minus 12. So I have this minus 12. I know that this uh, minus 12, these ones are going to have to be arranged in some sort of rectangle down in the left-hand corner. And my x's are going to go here. So since this is 12, maybe let's be strategic about this 12. What multiplies to 12? Um, 6 times 2, 1 times 12, 4 times 3. So those are kind of my arrangements for it to get up to that 12. 6 times 2, so like this would be 3 by 4. And if I try to do the 3 by 4, if I do it like this, say, that matches, but notice I, since these are positive, I would need to start putting positives in here. But if I start bringing in positives, um, they'll cancel out my negative 4s. I want to bring in a positive with a negative to keep my negative 4. So maybe I'll spread this out a little more again. Maybe I'll steal a row here, try and rearrange it this way and see if I can do that. So there's a 0 I'm bringing in, a positive x and a negative x, right? So I still have four negatives. Oh yeah, that's going to work because if I bring in another, whoops, another negative and another positive, these two x's, these two x's, that's still a zero. So that works. So this actually looks like a six by two arrangement. And notice on this side, I have x and then one, two, three, four, five, six. x minus six is one of my sides. And then this side is an x plus two. And it's interesting, the six times two, negative six times two is negative 12, negative six plus two is negative four. Cool, let's try another one. Uh, x squared minus six x, plus eight. So let's get these out of here. One, oh, well, I need six of these. One, two, three, four, five, six. That was convenient. Keep these out of the way. And I, know only, I only need eight, but I need eight positives. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so I know that it's going to be set up something like this. X squared in the top right corner. One's in the bottom, uh, sorry, top left corner. One's in the bottom right corner. Let me think about how I can arrange this eight. It could be, um, see, it could be one by eight. It could be um, two by four. Well, that's interesting, two by four, um, because I have six negatives. Oh, okay, wait, I see. A negative times a negative is a positive. So actually, I don't think I need to add any zeros here. I think I can just line these up. 
like this. Yeah, and see how that works because a negative times a negative is a positive. So this side is x minus 4, and this side is x minus 2. So we have a couple of ways to, uh, to go about doing these. Remember, the key here is to think about a negative times a negative is a positive, or a negative times a positive is a negative. Um, also, start to think about the relationship between this, what things multiply to that last term, and add to that middle term. Hey, don't forget to um, check the overview while you are, if you're watching this video, um, in OneNote. But also, when you get the assignment done in OneNote, go back to Teams and click Turn In so that I know to grade it for you. All right, uh, take care of yourself, and please email me questions. Some people have been doing that, and it's super helpful.